Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Now before I begin today's review, I want to say a couple of words about Movember. Movember is an annual event involving the growing of mustaches during the month of November to raise awareness of men's health issues such as prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and men's suicide. Now I've had a mustache since I was a baby. Uh, here's a photo of me at the age of three for proof. I had a mustache in theater school except for a week where I was playing the Nine of Hearts in a production of Alice in Wonderland, although I did shave half of it off first and then the other half a week later. So I've been told that if you have a beard and a mustache but don't want to lose the mustache, you can leave the mustache and shave the beard for November. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Presto changeo. I will be donating all of my YouTube membership funds in the month of November to the charity. And you can donate directly to my Movember challenge page by following the link I'll provide in the description. And to all of you men out there, check your nuts. But now I can see your nuts. I thank you. And today's review is of a fountain pen model that I first reviewed way back in December of 2019. This is the Wingsong 601A. I dubbed this pen Nomad and even did a cool Star Trek opening for it. I called it Nomad because in that episode of Star Trek, the enterprising captain and crew dealt with a deep space probe that had a collision with an alien probe, and the two repaired each other and merged into something new. I am Nomad. That's how I felt about this pen. It has the design features of two very iconic and historic fountain pens, the Schaefer Triumph and the Parker 51. This pen has the tubular nib of a Triumph and the section, filling system, and cap of the Parker 51. Far from being a dog's breakfast of a design mashup, That's strange. All of a sudden, I don't quite feel like myself. Oh, I feel all right, and yet I, I, uh... This pen is sleek and beautiful. So beautiful, in fact, that my wife, Wynne, fell in love with it, and it became her everyday carry fountain pen for more than a year. So I went on the hunt for another one for myself. It took me longer than I expected because these pens come with four different cap patterns and a number of different colors and body styles, with ink windows and without. Finding one that was the color I wanted with the body and cap that I wanted took me a while. I finally snagged one and received it last July. So let's finally take a look at my new Nomad. 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 All right, Nomad. 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 Sterilize. Paralyzed. Nomad. Nomad. Stop. Nomad, stop. Error. Right now. This package arrived today. I was not expecting anything. And I really don't have a clue what it is. It says it's a fountain pen. Uh, and it's got something inside. So let's find out what it is. I know what this is now. This is my Wingsung 601A. And there's a little insert here. Fountain pen, Wingsung super quality. Lots of Chinese, but some good filling instructions and a parts diagram as well, uh, which is very, very helpful if you want to disassemble this. It shows you how you're supposed to pump this in your ink, and it shows you how to uh, silicone grease the piston as well and how to clean it. So that's very, very helpful, even if it's in Chinese. Picture is worth a thousand Chinese words. Ooh, it's a crinkly condom. That's what she said. 
just for you ASMR fans out there. And there we go. It took me a while to find one that had this teal color, had this wavy cap, and it has a nice blue jewel on the top. But that cap is very, very nice. And this one doesn't have the ink window, but it does have this tubular nib. And it posts beautifully, and it's nicely balanced. And of course, it has the pump filler. And I also, with this auction, got this little tool in addition. And it just goes right over that little nut right there and then you can screw out the guts so let's forge on because inquiring minds want to know and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen as i mentioned in the introduction the wingsung 601a is available in an astonishing variety of nibs and caps and body styles. With gold caps, they come in four different patterns. This is the gold wave. There's a diamond pattern, a grid pattern, a twill pattern, and vertical stripes. The gold cap version comes in red, beige, lake blue, and black. The silver cap version has a chrome colored tubular nib and comes in two body styles with an ink window or without an ink window and it comes in seven colors cocoa beige gray indigo lake blue army green black and warship gray you can also get the 601a with a tubular two-toned nib in the stainless steel flighter version but wait that's not all act now and you can also get all of the chrome cap varieties in a 601A, but with an open nib if you don't like the tubular nib. Of course, if you drop the A designation, you can get a Wingsong 601 with a Parker 51 style hooded nib with silver caps and these same colors, but also demonstrators, transparent colors, and also the Flighter stainless steel model. If you want a piston filler hooded nib pen instead of the vacuumatic style, Look for the Wingsong 618. It has a screw-on cap, takes a ton of ink, and comes in an even more dizzying variety of colors and finishes. And they're only five bucks, a bargain at twice the price. Here are two Wingsong 618 piston fillers, one in black with a clear body, and one in deep transparent blue. And here is my Wingsong 601 Flighter with the stainless steel hood section which I added. Overall, the pen is similar in size and shape to the original Parker 51. Here's my friend Ron's dad's Parker 51 from the 1950s. This one is an aerometric rather than the original vacuumatic. And this one also has a 12 karat gold filled cap. From the top, we see a transparent acrylic jewel on the finial, and then the classic Parker style aero clip. There's no ambiguity here. This is a straight copy of the Parker clip. But again, since Parker gave up its Parker 75 pen design to the Chinese in 1979, it's no surprise that they are using these designs today. The clip is very usable, but feels a little flimsy. So I wouldn't overbend this, as you might not be able to get it to bend back into shape. The gold colored cap tapers up and has this marvelous wavy engraved pattern on the gold metal, which catches the light and is really quite beautiful. The end of the cap, there's a single groove under which there are the Chinese characters for Wing Sung, 601A, and then Made in China stamped into it. There's a very small step down to the barrel which tapers away towards an invisible seam on the blind cap. There it is right there. And another conically shaped blue acrylic finial jewel, 
with a gold band. The barrel is made of injection molded plastic, in this case the lake blue color. The cap slips off with the Parker 51 style clutch ring and it has a very similar feel to the original Parker 51. In fact, you can actually swap these caps for each other. With the cap off, we see the gold colored clutch ring, a tapering plastic section, and the two-toned gold colored tubular nib. Let's get a closer look at this nib. The tubular nib has the heart-shaped crescents separating the chrome tone from the gold tone that is very similar to the Schaefer Triumph nib. And then we have the Chinese characters, which I assume mean Wing Sun, and then made in China. And here's a look at the plastic feed. I want to say a couple of things about this style of nib, and actually nibs in general. It seems to be generally assumed that a gold nib is softer and more flexible than steel. I've experienced that that is not true. The Yovo steel nib on my Opus 88 Bella is way softer and more flexible than my 18 karat gold Platinum President, for example. I asked my nib expert, Jack Hernandez, about this as well, and he confirmed to me that the shape of the nib has more to do with how the nib bounces or doesn't bounce on a pen than whether it's steel or gold. This tubular nib is a case in point. The tubular, or arch shape, is a well-known structure. It's basic physics and the basis for much of the history of architecture. The pointed, or gothic arch, held up walls that soar into the sky and have remained standing for hundreds of years in gothic churches like Notre Dame. The arch makes materials more rigid. So the flatter the arch, the more the nib will flex. Or if the surface of the arch is perforated or cut, like on this Blue Dew flex nib. You can see the perforations by the breather hole and there are some cuts right there on the side edges of that nib that allow the nib to flex. This is a steel nib and it flexes very, very nicely because of those perforations and cuts in the arch shape. We will be looking in more detail at the Blue Dew as it compares to this new flex pen from Aaron Pens that I will review this Saturday. So it makes sense that the tubular style nib is going to be stiff unless other design factors are brought into play, like maybe the Waverly style nib. I'll talk more about this tubular nib in my likes and dislikes. The blind cap unscrews to reveal the push button filler. The button presses a piston inside the barrel, which creates a vacuum which sucks up ink. I'll show you in a moment how to use the small plastic tool that I bought with this pen uh, to disassemble and maintain that piston. I should also mention here that the original 601A sold with a true vacuumatic filling system. Uh, that consisted of a rubber diaphragm that extended down the barrel when you pressed on the button and created the vacuum, very much like the original Vacuumatic from Parker. But they updated the 601A to an actual piston rather than a rubber diaphragm. So to be absolutely correct, the filling system inside this 601A is not Vacuumatic, it is a pump filler. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen very sleek and balanced in the hand. This is another brilliant feature of the original Parker 51 design, where the cap comes on and off with a very, very satisfying slip, and it posts deeply and makes the pen just a joy to hold. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably, but this pen begs to be posted. The 601 Flighter is also a sublime poster and feels awesome in the hand. The Wingsong 618 with the screw cap and the larger cap band doesn't have the same feeling, unfortunately. And you do have cap threads there in the middle of the section and barrel. I bought this pen on eBay for $22.80 US with free shipping. Now let me show you how to disassemble the 601A, grease that piston, and fill the pen using the pump filler. It's Friday, November 5th. Fountain Pen Day 2021, and I celebrated today by getting a terrific deal 
magnificent deal on a Waterman Karen uh, in black and gold, 18 karat gold nib, and it's a stub from Applebaum with their 20% off fountain pen day uh, discount. I got it for an incredible price. So I'm really looking forward to that pen coming in and comparing it with my beautiful Amber Karen, which I also got for a steal. So these are some of the most beautiful and great writing pens in the world, in my opinion. So I can't wait for that pen to come in. We're gonna take the 601A apart with this little tool, and then I'm going to ink it up with some Edelstein Topaz, a really nice ink that will match the ink on my fingers. So there is this blind cap, which disappears beautifully on this pen. So you unscrew that blind cap and you get at the pump filler mechanism, which you can use this tool to go on top of that little hex nut right there. And you give it a turn, which unscrews that mechanism. And there's quite a few turns there. Take the wrench off and then you can pull the mechanism out. And there's that piston. This should have a little bit of silicone grease on it. So while we're disassembling the pen, I'm going to take a little bit of silicone grease. Just a little dab will do you. Wipe that around the piston. And that will make sure we have a nice slide and a nice seal. You can also clean out inside that barrel. If you're changing inks or whatever, do some maintenance. And with a Q-tip, you can grease up the inside of that barrel as well. Inserting it back in, make sure there's no leaks. Just a little dab of grease right there on those threads. Also goes a long way towards sealing that ink chamber. Then we can put our wrench back on, screw the guts back down into the pen. Lots of threads there, that's good. And just, just finger tight. And then you can work that mechanism and that should work really, really smoothly. And we'll see how well that fills up this pen. So let's open up our ink. We're going to dip the nib down to that hole right there. That's where the ink needs to be to fill this up. And we're going to pump it once, twice. You should hear some bubbles. The more you pump it, the more ink you should get. And it only takes a couple of bounces. I've done it like 15 times there. But that's so easy to do. You know, some paper. And we see whether it writes. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Wingsung 601A with a Parker 51, a Wingsung 601 Flighter, a Moonman TI-200 Titanium, and a Jinhao 85. The Jinhao 85 is a direct copy of the new Parker 51, right down to that new model's many flaws. In fact, there are those of us who believe the steel nib version of the Parker 51, not the one that's made in France, but the one that's actually made in China, we believe that it is actually made by Jinhao. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Being Parker 51 style pens, they all post brilliantly with the exception of the Jinhao 85, which posts very poorly in keeping with the pen it's copying. Of course, that's a screw cap, just like the new Parker 51. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, a 90 GSM paper, and this is the Wingsung 601A, and it has a steel fine tubular nib. Let's check the wetness. The 
this pen is very wet for a very fine pen. However, the nib is, listen to that, it's rough. I'm not going to say it's scratchy. Um, I had to align the tines slightly, and now they are fairly even, very even actually, uh, but it still has a lot of feedback. So it isn't what I would call scratch, as it's not tearing up the paper, uh, but there's a lot of drag to the point that it feels a bit uncomfortable. The ink today is Pelican Edelstein Topaz. Here are some close matches to the Pelican Topaz uh, from Inkswatch.com. The Topaz is a lovely ink that has a terrific amount of shading to it. These inks were named for gemstones, and this name fits this ink. A Topaz is actually a gemstone that is naturally colorless, but is often treated with heat or radiation to make it a deep blue, reddish-orange, pale green, pink, or purple. Now, as to line variation, there's nothing here. This is a very, with a capital very, stiff nib. That's what she said. That's what she said. This is as close to writing with a nail as I've ever experienced, and that includes the one my wife uses. That pen does not feel this awful. In fact, that pen is super wet and actually super smooth. This line is 0.3 millimeters in thickness, uh, which makes it a Western extra, extra fine, or a Japanese extra fine to medium. This leads to me to believe that this is either an extra fine nib that was sold to me incorrectly by the seller, or Wing Sung is wildly inconsistent. It actually could be both. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. Well, it caught the page there, but it's actually feeling very, more smooth in this direction than it is in this direction. A lot more drag there, but of course it dries out. So it's not getting any ink. And for some quick writing. It's keeping up now. But I have to say that uh, when I first inked this pen, it would run dry quickly, and I'd have to pump it a little bit to get the ink flowing again. So I cleaned the pen out with a little soapy water and then re-inked it. It seems to be more consistent now. I haven't had any problems with it drying out. So that's always a good little uh, rule of thumb to whenever you get a new pen, uh, manufacturing oils and things like that get on the feed, which repel ink and water. Uh, so it's a good idea, a little drop of dish soap into so, uh, a glass of water and suck some ink up through that mechanism, clean it out with some clear water, dry it completely, and then re-ink it. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Obviously, I like this pen or I wouldn't have bought another one soon after my wife relieved me of the first one. I like the filling system. It's easy to use and it works and it holds a lot of ink. I absolutely love how this pen caps and uncaps and how it feels in the hand uh, when it's posted. The balance is awesome. You can hold the pen anywhere along this section so it accepts a variety of types of grips. 
I love the gold wavy cap design, the arrow clip, and the jewels adorning both the top and the bottom finials. I love the look of that tubular nib. But that's where the love stops for me. I don't love how this pen feels on the page. And that will lead me to a little bit of a rant. I'm going to echo some of the statements that my YouTube colleague SBRE Brown made during his live chat just the other day about quality and Chinese pens. When Stephen was asked about Chinese pens, he was clear that there should be no prejudice about where in the world pens are made. Judgments can be made, however, on the quality of a product coming from various manufacturers. I agree 1000% with this sentiment. Quality, Stephen said, was about consistency. If you buy a Mont Blanc, there is a very high percentage chance that it will be superb quality, unit after unit. They just have that reputation after years and years of quality manufacturing. The problem with many Chinese brands is one of consistency. At lower prices for Chinese made pens, you're taking a lower risk for getting an inconsistent product. I see this time and time again from Jin Hao to Wing Sung and Moon Man. The Moon Man nibs, in my experience, are all over the map in terms of consistency. Pen BBS, however, has been the most consistent Chinese maker in my experience. I've purchased well over 40 pens from Pen BBS, and I can count on one hand the number of dud units I've received. And this wing song is an example of the inconsistency of a big Chinese manufacturer. Every so often, at $20 a pen and hundreds of thousands of units, you're going to run into variants. And when I add together the facts that this is an extra fine, tubular style Chinese nib, it should be no surprise that this is an absolute nail. Uh, it's very uncomfortable to write with. I'm looking to get into uh, a replacement of that nib. Uh, they're easy to get, but uh, they're not so easy to replace, actually. Uh, they're, they're cheap, but it's a whole day exercise that may or may not be successful. Getting back to Wingsung for a moment, I've mentioned before that there are, in fact, two Wingsungs. It's confusing, but true. I'll call them divisions, and they are both owned by Hero. What's the matter, Pop? I'm confused. Which makes it more confusing. One division makes the very inexpensive student model pens in the 3000 series, like the 3008. The other makes the more upscale 600 series pens, like the 618, the 628, 698, and the 699. The 628 sports a 14 karat gold number 5 size nib, and it's a terrific pen. I reviewed this pen recently. And there is a new model 629 Wingsung that sports a number 6 size 14 karat gold nib and is a piston filler. I've just purchased one of those, and I'm borrowing a couple of Mont Blancs from a friend to do a head-to-head -head comparison very soon. So watch for that. But Wingsung, even the good one, is a manufacturer of mass-produced pens. And I mean mass-produced. We're talking millions of units. There are bound to be duds and flaws and units that you just toss into the garbage. At $5 to $30 a pen, it isn't that big a risk. But when you spend $300 on an Italian, German, or Japanese pen that just isn't right out of the box, you really appreciate the warranty and dealership network. You don't get those things with Chinese manufacturers. There's no Wingsong or Moonman 1-800 number for customer service or satisfaction. Is this the Chinese People's Telephone Company? Good. Now just what kind of Mickey Mouse operation are you running over there? You, you say you service a population of over 750 million people? Well, look, look, don't, don't be surprised if Ma Bell shows up before the president gets there. We wouldn't pass up a market like that for all the AT and T in China. Whoa. The only exception I'm aware of is Pen BBS. Baini Zhang is the spokeswoman and Etsy shopkeeper for Pen BBS and does actually answer your questions and help customers. I've received a replacement for my cracked barrel on my 456. I will be receiving a replacement for a broken clip on a Model 500. Small is sometimes much better. In all of this talk of China, I want to be clear that I'm excluding Taiwan from this issue. I've experienced pens from Taiwan manufacturers like Twisby, Narwhal, and Tianzi, 
as well as Opus 88, my beloved Bella here. They are excellent products and each of those companies have excellent communications and customer service. So chalk up one dud from Wingsung, the good company. I may just replace the nib on this pen as the pen is very pretty. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. And I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section. And you get cool emojis and badges too. Whether you like my responses or not, your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.